Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, so today we're going to be painting four boxes of Adeptus Astartes infantry for Legions Imperialis. Uh, so let's just dive straight in. So I'm going to show you guys how I prepped everything. Uh, so we took some uh, select units off of the sprue. So all of the Contemptor Dreadnoughts. We went ahead and built those and then popped them on popsicle sticks. And so on the sprue, you're going to get one assault cannon and then one last cannon uh, dreadnought. And then we also took off the banner bearers uh, just to make those a little bit easier to paint. We also popped off all of the terminators. Uh, so I'm doing a Sons of Horus uh, scheme, so I'm going to be painting these as the first company, so they're going to be a completely different color. And then the missile launcher guys uh, come in two parts, uh, so I took those off so that I could build them and then put those on popsicle sticks as well. But everything else we left on the sprue, and then we clipped away the uh, bits of the frame that would inhibit you from being able to reach all of the areas of the miniatures. So uh, as far as colors go, uh, all of the infantry got hit with uh, gray, and then I tried to do a zenithal with white uh, just so that we can add a little bit of uh, interest since we're going to be using a lot of translucent paints. And then for the Dreadnoughts, we prime those in silver. So with all that prep work out of the way, let's go ahead and get started painting. All right, so for these Contemptors, uh, so you kind of have a choice. You can either try and paint all of the metallic bits first and then paint the armor. Or you can flip that around, paint all of the armor, and then go and try and do the metallic bits. Uh, the metallic bits, since these are epic scale miniatures, are very, very hard to reach in some areas. So, like, trying to get these leg joints here without messing up the armor. Uh, so, that's why I primed these silver, and we're going to do all of that first. Uh, so, we can be a little messy here, uh, but we're trying to just hit all of those metallics with Basiliconum Gray uh, from Citadel. And this is sort of a very light uh, black uh, contrast paint and looks great for any uh, metallic guns or metallic bits that you're going to have on your miniature. All right, so for our next color, we're going to switch over to Black Templar. And first, we're going to use this to darken down the barrel shrouds on all of the last cannon dreadnoughts just like this and we're also going to use this as an accent color on some of the armor so for me for all of my assault cannon dreadnoughts i'm going to do their shoulders in this color And that's just as easy as just blocking it in like this. And then for all of the last cannon uh, dreadnoughts, for their accents, uh, we're going to do the knee pads in this color. Alright, so all that's left to do on these is to color in the teal armor. And for that, we're going to use Sons of Horus Green. No real trick to this. Uh, you just want to lay down some nice even coverage on all of the exposed armor panels. Now this is a notoriously thin uh, layer paint, so you may end up needing two coats. Uh, but just take your time and be really careful and make sure you don't hit any of the black parts that we've already painted. All right, so we've got all those armor panels base coated. Now we're just going to shade them with a little bit of uh, green dark deep shade from AK Interactive. This will just shift that teal 
uh, to a slightly darker green in the recesses. You can be fairly liberal with this. Just make sure that it doesn't pull anywhere. So here we are with the green dark applied and mostly dried. And our very last step, there's a little bit of recess detail that we can uh, darken down. So we're going to take, now I want to call out this is the new Nuln oil shade, not the old one. Uh, it's a much thinner formulation. And we're going to thin it down even more, about 50-50 with a little speed paint medium. And we're going to run some of this mix in the recess details. So, like right here on that stomach armor. And then also underneath the knee pads as well. So just go around your model and any... Uh, recess detail that still needs a little love just go ahead and hit those and with that done our dreadnoughts are ready for a little varnish and then we can go ahead and put them on their bases all right so now we're going to make a start on the actual space marine models the infantry models and to start out, we're going to give them an all-over coat with contrast uh, pterodon turquoise. This does a pretty good job of approximating the Sons of Horus teal armor at this scale. Right? So no need to worry about being neat here, uh, but you do want to make sure your brush isn't too heavily overloaded um, so that you can minimize pulling on the miniature and as much as you can you know go ahead and avoid uh things that aren't going to be teal but it's okay if you're a little messy at this stage uh, we just want to get all of that armor covered all right so with the uh, teal armor out of the way we're going to switch over to contrast black templar and we're going to paint all of the weapons uh, in this color. As we're doing this, we're going to try and be fairly careful and precise with this. Uh, if you do happen to make any mistakes, uh, you can clean up the armor with Sons of Horus Green, uh, the layer paint. But we're going to try and be as neat as possible to avoid having to do that. All right, so we're also going to use this color to sort of handle the quote-unquote negative space uh, where they had to run extra plastic because of the molding process. Uh, but we don't want those parts to be noticeable. So on the missile launcher sergeant here, for instance, his hair plume has this very awkward shape on the top. Uh, so we're gonna black out the part of it that does not make sense. And I can actually demonstrate this a little bit better with the infantry that are still on the sprue. So for instance, this space marine right here, there's a ton of plastic in here that connects the gun to the body. And by blacking that out, uh, once you're at a tabletop distance, it makes it, you know, barely noticeable. Uh, so just make sure you go ahead and get all of that blacked out, and we'll move on to the next color. So now we're switching over to the wet palette and some traditional paints. Uh, so we're going to start with Antares Red from Scale 75 Scale Color Range. And so with this, we're looking to color in the cloak on the uh, Praetor model, as well as any hair plumes uh, that may exist on some of your command squad and sergeant miniatures. That right out of the way, we're now going to move on to Scale 75 Dwarven Gold uh, to paint our gold details. And this is primarily going to be the hilts of any power swords that might be present in the unit. So on the Praetor, for instance.
and then also on any iron halos uh, and vexillas. And we're also going to hit the tops of these banner poles as well. All right, so next we're going to move on to the silvers, and I'm using pig iron from P3. Uh, it's a sort of a dark silver, uh, probably roughly equivalent to lead belcher, if you are familiar with the Citadel paint range. And so to start out with, we're going to go ahead and hit all of the banner poles. Right, so in addition to the uh, banner poles, we also want to make sure we hit the blades of any of the swords. And then we also want to uh, make sure that we pick out the teeth of the chain blades and the chain bayonets on all of our infantry and we're also going to hit the magazines for any of the bolt weapons so just help break up that giant mass of black so now for the plasma gunners we're going to do something a little bit different uh, so i broke out the vallejo chrome and we're going to run some of this over the plasma coils on the plasma gun now, this is a model air paint, so you want to be very careful uh, that it doesn't run all over the place on you. But just go ahead and drag the side of your brush over those plasma coils. All right, and now to actually apply the glow, we're going to use Contrast Frost Heart. And all we're going to do is get a little bit of this on a nice teeny tiny brush and run that over our chrome. So now we've got one last detail to do, and that is the banner cloth itself. Now you can use really any color you want your banners to be. Me personally, I am a fan of Iraco uh, from Scale 75, so that's what I am going to use today. And since we're going over uh, white, you might need a couple coats. Uh, the Araco is not quite as thin as the Aldebaran Red, but it is another thin one. And just be very careful when you get close to those metallics. All right, so for the Terminators, the very first thing we're going to do is take some Contrast Blood Angels Red and we're going to put this on all of the tassels uh, on the Terminator miniatures. And now I've put this on a wet palette just so that I have a little bit more control of how much of this is actually on my brush to make it a little bit easier to make sure that we can be nice and neat with this. All right, so we've got all of that red blocked in. And I've neglected to mention, uh, I'm painting my Terminators as Abaddon's first company, Justarin. Uh, so, as I hinted to previously, our next color is going to be Black Templar uh, contrast paint. And pretty much the rule here is if it's not red, it's going to get painted black. Uh, so, doing that red first means we can get nice you know, strong coverage, and then we have sort of guidepost, if you will, for what needs to be black. Uh, so we're just going to go ahead and coat everything that's still white in this black paint. All right, so with that black applied, we can now move on to all of the parts that we want to be gold. Now, there's a lot of trim on these miniatures, I'm personally, I'm not going to hit all of the trim. I'm trying to speed paint these. Uh, so I'm going to pick out the bits that I think will have the, the largest impact. And for that, we're going to go back to our Scale 75 Dwarven Gold. So on these miniatures, uh, specifically the 
squad captains, the haft of the uh, power hammer is a good uh, piece to pick out. Then we're also going to get the shoulder trim in this color as well. And then they've also got tilting shields on their left shoulder and color those in. And then lastly, they've got a uh, sort of the top of the waist tassels, their sort of belt buckle. Uh, that's a nice spot to hit as well, just to kind of break up the, the black. All right, so we've got a couple of details we're going to pick out in P3 Pig Iron. Uh, so for these uh, Thunder Hammer wielding chaps, we're going to go ahead and get the head of the hammer. And then for all of the guns in the squad, we're going to go ahead and put a line over the top of the barrels. And then you can also add an edge highlight with the side of your brush at the top of the casing as well. All right, so we've only got one last detail to do, and that's the little mini bases that all of our infantry have stuck between their feet. So for that, I'm going to use scale 75 brown gray. Now, that color is going to change based on your basing scheme. So for me, that is the shadow color in my bases, uh, which if you're interested in how I painted my bases, I'm not going to show that in this video. I made an entire separate video that I'm going to have linked up in the cards. Uh, so by all means, check that out. But you want to use that shadow town and just go ahead and cover... Uh, the little mounds on all of the infantry models. So I'm demonstrating on the Terminators, but you're going to do this with all of the infantry. And the absolute final last step uh, before we varnish everything, we're going to go ahead and give it a nice thin all over shade. This will sort of almost kind of act a little bit like a glaze, as well as darkening down all of our recesses the further... Uh, separate them from the high points of the miniature. So this mix, it's one bottle of the new 18 milliliter uh, pot of Nullum Oil. So two parts of that, and then one part of Speed Paint Medium, and then one part distilled water. And then I added just a couple of drops of airbrush flow improver in here just to help it flow a little bit nicer. And then uh, I store that in you know a nice large dropper bottle. And so this is about 45 milliliters uh, worth of mix, which will last you a very, very long time. And diluting the Nuln Oil like this makes it perfect for these small-scale miniatures without uh, obscuring too much detail. So I'm demonstrating this on the Terminators, but you're going to want to do this with all of your infantry miniatures. Just go ahead and give a nice all-over uh, coat of this. And you can push it around, make sure you get it into all of the recesses. Just be very careful that it doesn't pull in between the miniature's legs. Uh, you will end up getting a paint film that sort of connects the legs and looks very, very ugly that you'll have to, you know, carefully trim away. So save yourself that extra work. Just make sure it doesn't pull can dry off your brush a little bit and then whisk away any excess wash. And with that final step done, we're ready to go ahead and varnish them and get them put on their bases. All right. So before I do the final miniature showcase, I do want to give a shout out to our 
uh, very first channel member, uh, Mr. Roland Lucas, you rock. Uh, if anybody else is interested in getting the videos that I release uh, early before the general public, uh, check out my channel memberships. Um, you know, you leave me a tip. And out of appreciation for that, I release all of my content early. And you also get shout outs in my videos as well. Uh, but let's take a look at everything. So here are the Justaren Terminators. And by far, these are probably my, my favorite unit out of the box. Really love the way that those guys turned out. And then I've got an Assault Squad here. Again, not an award-winning paint job, but enough contrast to, to help them stand out on the table. And then here's a Command Squad. And I used uh, the banner transfers from the uh, Legions Imperialis starter set uh, for that. Then we've got the Missile Launcher Dudes. And we've got our Contemptor. Needs just a little bit more matte varnish, uh, but you can get the idea. And the other thing I wanted to point out, so with every four sprues, so every two boxes of infantry that you buy, for a lot of the units in the box, you'll have enough extra dudes of each unit to make a four-man base. Uh, so it saves you money to, to do this. There's no sense in letting those figures go to waste. And then especially for the Space Marines, uh, they're big and bulky enough that they actually take up a good amount of space on the base. And that little bit of space that's up there up front, uh, you can add some basing bits like some crates or whatnot, uh, which I did that for my Solar Auxilia. I'll put a link up in the, uh, the cards for that if you're interested. Um, but you could do that with the Terminators, with the Plasma Gunners, with the Missile Launcher guys. Uh, you can't do that with the Command Squad. You get just enough uh, on a sprue to make a full Command Squad. You could do that with the Assault guys as well. And I believe you can do it with the standard Bolter Marines. I haven't actually put them on bases yet. Uh, but I do believe because you get the uh, Sergeant model and then you get a Vexilla model, that means you get two extra um, Bolter Marines uh, per sprue. So you can build out some extra bases of four man each uh, with those as well. Now, the big question that I had, uh, so for storage, I had designed some 3D print storage trays uh, when I originally did the Solar Auxilia. Uh, the trays are available on my Colts 3D store. There's a link in the description. They're absolutely free, though, uh, to download. I didn't have the Marines built yet, so I didn't know if my standard tray sizes would work for uh, the command squads and the contemptor dreadnoughts but as you can see they do uh, there's plenty of clearance for both of those uh, so happy to announce that the standard tray loadouts that come in the file bundle uh, also work for the Space Marines with no adjustments needed. All right, and lastly, uh, if you're not subscribed, definitely consider clicking that subscription button and the notification bell because my Wave 2 kits have arrived. So in the upcoming weeks, uh, we will be you know unboxing these and getting these painted up on the channel. And I've got a good mix of everything. So we've got the Astarte support box. We've got the Spartan assault tanks. We've got the Auxilia support box. And then we've also got the Malkador uh, kit as well. So we'll be getting these built and painted up soon. Uh, but until next time, keep slaying that gray. And I'll catch you in the next video.